to. And so that picture, our third, fourth, and fifth graders, they will also have state data. So you have that triangulation of data that is, is something that we're lacking for elementary, is something that's a scientific piece of data that we can use to truly help identify students' needs. So this helps from the student perspective of understanding that. And that's a really great thing because we want students to take ownership of their learning. Mm -hmm. But then when you flip to the back of that page, you can see uh, at the very top when it says um, from March through May 9th. So this is a snapshot of what that student did. Now, um, I would imagine, and I didn't speak with this teacher about this, but I would imagine that they were taking this on a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more as their her classroom was full. And they were spending more time on, on the online instruction. So she was getting into this um, information, or into Moby Max a little bit more. But you can look at our history with Moby Max. We have teachers that have been paying independently for Moby Max all the way back to 2013. So we have a lot of teachers that have experience with Moby Max. There's a lot of data that, that backs that up, but we have a lot of teachers that have been paying for it out of pocket because they value it so much. Um, at Silver Lake Elementary, Hillary Geiger, what she had, um, a lot of her teachers were had access to it. There are certain teachers that really took off with it, so we have some data from what they were using, and that, that was really important in the decision making. So our task force, our elementary task force team, they had more information to be able to take back. Um, Tracy Early from Lincoln, her second grade team routinely uses Moby Max, and she couldn't say enough about how much her second grade team really likes it and supports it. So we had some piloting data, as well as the presentation, and then the vetting process. We, we looked through about four to five different um, programs to make sure that we would settle on what fit Cuyahoga Falls' needs the most. Because there's a lot of great programs out there. It doesn't mean that they're fitting for Cuyahoga Falls. So the final thing was taking it to the task force and letting those administrators and teachers just kind of go to town and research it, use it, play with it, go in and out of the lessons, um, have all of their brainstorming sessions. and they. They worked on it for at least two different meetings, but I think it was actually three. And then they settled on Moby Max as, as being the, the resource that they felt like would be best fitting for Pet Auto Falls. They did a really nice job. I appreciated the work that they did with that. One of the things that was part of Dr. Nichols' presentation was that for the elementary children, um, the children's teachers would be providing daily online live instruction. Will that be the case with the kids that are going to be in online virtual school? So the presentation of the instructional process for K through five will look a little bit different than six through 12. Our K through five teachers they will be, um, they're, go they're gonna be running that. Did I ask that question, Mom? I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm specifically focusing on elementary. Okay. Okay, all right, okay. thank you. Okay, um, but the comparison is with six through 12, they're gonna be using Edmentum, and they're just gonna have support. The K through five team, those teachers, they will be facilitating that instruction. They will be creating the lessons. They will have live lessons. They will have videotaped lessons. They will meet with all of their students at times. They will meet with small groups. They will have um, interactive lessons, just like they would if they were in the classroom. So for our remote learners, that looks different from the K through five. It is definitely our teachers running those classrooms. Is that answering your question? So this is a supplemental piece she mentioned, she said that to answer your questions simply, yeah. you said online, live, lessons. Daily. That's Daily. what it says. Yes. Daily, mm -hmm. online, live instruction. I'm reading it. Okay. For the remote learning. And that's mm -hmm. what, that's that's what we intend. Right. And that's mm -hmm. why we want to make sure that 
if parents are choosing that option, then they can make sure that their child can have access to technology from 8.30 to 3. That way there can be a schedule throughout the day. So they might do a classroom meeting at 8.30, and then at 9 o'clock they might start with a mini literacy, um, you know, chunked lesson, and then they might break that up into small groups, and a small group stays on and works with the teacher, and then a new group will come on, you know, 20 minutes later. So that's, that's why it's important that those students can have access to their technology and that resource all day long and not, say, be available for, you know, two hours during the day, and that's going to be sufficient instruction for that child. That, that's probably one of our biggest questions it, it, from parents is, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel like I'm buying a pig in a poke here. I don't know what I'm signing up my kid for if I go virtual. Um, so the more clarity we can provide our families on this, you know, certainly that would be helpful. I want to I want to point out that, that a difference for us in terms of make, choosing MobyMax, Edmentum, our teachers, uh, live instruction, those kinds of things, is we're not purchasing a canned curriculum. Correct. That's not what we're doing. <coughs> we are trying to build parallel platforms yeah. so that our students can move in and out. Certainly these supplements become more of they become more mainstay as students are more in the remote situation than if they are in the in-person instruction, but there's still supplements that are used in in-person, blended, and in a remote setting. It just becomes more of a crutch, if you will, or more of a more of a supplement as as you're moving outside of the outside of the classroom. But as as Dr. Seifer said, We've heard loud and clear, and as you said, we've heard loud and clear that our folks expect their kids to see our teachers. Right. And frankly, that's that's the litmus test, right? Every student, every day, every opportunity. So we innovate, we create, we personalize education for all. And it doesn't matter whether you're in person or whether you're remote. Right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, so when a student, a fourth grader would log in, they would, um, they're going to they're gonna have options to see quite a few things. Now, the very first login that a student does, um, they take a diagnostic assessment. So a diagnostic assessment is giving us information about where the student is with their learning, what they need to be learning next, what are their next steps, and where is their best place for learning. So we call that their zone of proximal development. So where's their best place for learning? So the great thing about MobyMax is that MobyMax and NWEA MAP can talk to one another. So that, that information can be married together. MAP doesn't have any type of um, instructional piece. It's informational for us. MobyMax gives us that informational piece as well as it gives us another piece of data with the diagnostics and then with progress monitoring and then with assessments. So whenever we assess our students, we never want to have just one, one picture, right? That's not a very valid view of what our, what our students know. So the great thing about MobyMax is it can give us another lens to look at what our students know 
where a teacher might possibly need to reteach, and then where they're going to direct their learning from that point. MobyMax can be designed where students have their own individual learning path based off of that diagnostic. So it'll be very individualized. We might be in the same classroom, but I might be working at um, you know, maybe a, a 4.3 um, in my fourth grade learning standards. I've progressed to you know, fourth grade three months in, where somebody else might be at a 3.9. So they're going to get the sweet spot of learning through this. However, a teacher can also assign what she wants or he wants those students to learn. So it has both features to it. So this is the main screen. These are all of the different um, options that our teachers will have available to them. And that comes when, when you're looking at this bookend piece. This next one is where there are assignments. So teachers can put assignments in here or it can be programmed based off of their diagnostic assessment. So for example, um, the first thing that would be in here would be a diagnostic and that would be the only thing a student could choose. So they would have to take the diagnostic in order to proceed and move on. So Julie and I were walking through quite a bit of the assessments and the activities. And this quick check is something that, that we really found out that we liked. Mm -hmm. So we're going to walk through this a little bit. Which two equations represent the statement 32 is eight times as many as four? Check all that are true. Dr. Nichols, do you want to take the quick check? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you can see. Are you seriously going to take it? Huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy and I are. It's now. Yeah. Eight times four would be the first one. I'm just going to start. I'm just going to start clicking because it won't let you do anything if you don't okay. answer your questions. Mike sold his painting for ninety-six dollars. His painting sold for eight times as much as his sketch. Oh. How much did his sketch sell for? So the great thing about these is all of these questions and the way that appears is very, it resembles what the OST looks like for students. So the OST, it can read the questions to them. The students can make the pictures bigger. They can control the color of the screen, you know, that kind of thing, um, which students love. They love being able to individualize it. Um, that kind of thing. And, and so when Julie and I were individualizing it, there's a timer on it to make sure that they're not taking too long individualizing it and, and having fun that they need to get back to their learning. And then we were sad. What? And then we were sad. We were sad. So Select you... the situation that can be represented by the equation 7 times 2 equals n. So what I want to point out is the complexity of the responses that are there. So this isn't this this isn't um, just basic knowledge. This is students having to apply, having to put things together. They're going to have to synthesize the information that they already know. Mm -hmm. And obviously, this is fourth grade, so it appears very different at the different grade levels. Are the choices of answers read to them as well, or are they expected to? Can be. They, they can, can be. be. And is it available in different David languages? David has seven yes, appointments. Has very, very Carrie David has two up. times as many yeah. appointments as David. Carrie has N appointments. I'm very impressed by this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think this is going to be... It's very exciting. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very impressive. From, mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't answer. We didn't answer. <laughs> First one. Dr. Seifert's not doing For the party, John ordered well. five large pizza pies, which each have 12 slices of pizza. He also ordered eight small pizza pies, which each have eight slices of pizza. Let's see if we rush through it. Oh, see it. Let us go ahead. We rush Drag through each it. number that is a multiple of seven into the box. So this is this is a skill that students have to that they start working on very early on. Mm -hmm. And they have the ability to obviously, you know, work on a task like this. 
A new restaurant plans on having three times as many customers each week. Which table below follows this rule? The value of the digit two in the number 25,381 is 10 times greater than the value of the digit two in which of the following numbers? Select the equations below that represent the number 72,900. Which of the following numbers uh, can yeah, be rounded to the <laughs> Which of the following expressions are equal? But when a student does something like Complete this. the equation below. 300. Um, on the report, it'll say how long a student Michelle worked is solving the equation. on the assessment. Nine so times 17. Good. The assessment I worked on earlier today, I spent four minutes on. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously a, a red light. The student didn't spend enough time on it. The trees were planted in. But from this data, it's easy to Which identify who love. can um, receive intervention in what area terms. and who's ready for enrichment. Correct? Yes, it seems that way. I mean, I'm sorry, I was trying to. That's all right. I'm, I'm thinking it's a quick identification to establish where you need intervention or enrichment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the teacher doesn't have to spend a lot of time mm -hmm. digging through all of that information to know, okay, this one's going to receive an advanced class mm -hmm. with enrichment. Mm -hmm. options. So, so students that are. Um, advanced learners, identified as gifted, they go to town with this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Right. They absolutely love it. They mm -hmm. they move very quickly. And that's one of our weaker areas, right, is our gifted learners right. being able to make more than a year's growth. This kind of learning is ideal for them because they know they can do whatever they need to and they'll be challenged if they work harder. And that's, that's an important skill for gifted learners because they'll often sit back because things come easy to them. Mm -hmm. So they don't learn that, that value of what hard work means because they're so used to things coming easy. Yep. But when they do this, they keep working because it's motivating. And now they're learning what that, that work ethic and that study ethic and what trying is all about. And this is risk-free. It's, it's not intimidating. There's nothing scary about it. If they miss something, that's okay. They're not going to be embarrassed because it's their private learning. Where your gifted learners often, if they don't know an answer or they don't know something, they will shut down and not share it with you. Okay. And this is something that they're going to keep on going. And since it's individualized, a teacher can talk with them and meet with them mm -hmm. and work on that together. Does this max out then at any particular grade level? For example, where does the shift take place from Moby Max to Edmentum as far as the skill level? This is K K through eight. Okay. So we've got kids who could go into pre-algebra using Moby Max. We do. Um, we were we were recommending the purchase of K through five. However, we think that they're going to give us license for six, seven, and eight. So we could individualize who Good. would be using that. Good. So, for example, there's there's teachers at the middle school that will contact me and say. I need this for this learner and this, mm -hmm. and then I go and I find what, what the right learning is and then take that to the middle school for them. Okay. And then I, I help design what that learner <coughs> would need because it might not be materials that the middle school has access to. So this is that same kind of thing that they would be able to, to use something that's appropriate. However, middle school students, the way this appears, I don't know what the six through eight, they, right. they would what think that like? this is babyish. So they wouldn't want it to look like this. Mm -hmm. But the option is there if they... Definitely. Right. So all of the results would be found in this graph paperwork back here so that either it's easy access for our teachers as well as access for our parents and students to see. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things our parents ask for. Yes. They want something that they can use with their children at home. Mm -hmm. They want something that's easy to manage, mm -hmm. That that is risk-free for them too, mm -hmm. right? Because if, if technology is intimidating, 
to a parent, they're not going to want to partner with their child. Right. Mm -hmm. But if it's not, and it's something that, that they can problem solve through, they're going to work with their child. And that's the best way to make those home-to-school connections and to build the importance of education early on. Mm -hmm. When you build that, that um, foundation early on, that education is important, and it becomes a part of your entire family, and what you do together mm -hmm. is you learn together, and you talk together, and you think together, and you problem solve together, that creates a lifestyle for those kids. Okay. And that's the kind of thing that we want for our students. So having this be a resource for parents to work on together, whether it's in that remote setting, the blended setting, or if students just have a couple different lessons that they need to work on when they're in person, but they get to do it at home, then it's all the better because it's it's building that foundation yeah. that kids need to realize that learning is is what you're all about. Every day you're learning and you're learning something new. And that's, that's how you fill yourself up and surround your days. And that's how you make your dreams happen. Thank so you. So that's, that's how you start that whole foundation. And, and this, this piece will be great. And yeah. Hillary did share that her parents loved this. Mm -hmm. so, so that was some good feedback that we received. Can we take a brief look at just what the interface looks at for Edmento? Oh, mm -hmm. Just the interface, just to see what it looks like. And then maybe we'd have them come back in October or something and talk about how it is being used. Sure. It's one thing for us to talk about how we can use it. It's another to have a conversation mm -hmm. about how, how it is being used and what, what we can do with them. Hey, Rachel. Does Movimax have the ability to show the students maybe what they haven't completed yet? So when they do their login, and they, they're on that, I refer to it as the home page. Uh -huh. If there is something that they were assigned and they haven't gotten that done yet, is there something that pops up on that home page to alert them, alert the parents? It's, it's right here. So you can see your list so, of It tells so you the, in progress. Okay. In progress. And then this one, it just tells you the date assigned. So that means the student hasn't started it yet. And that, those are there because I took that form in the <laughs> so, so those that it populated, okay. you know, what learning standards I scored zero points on. <laughs> and so I assigned those lessons to myself, right, as a fourth grader. So those lessons then populated right gotcha. there. Okay. All right. So it, it gave me a whole list of the standards. So then the teachers can look at the standards and prioritize what standards are we focusing on with our main instruction right now. And is there something that this this child would benefit from me adding in? Okay. So there's that huge flexibility yeah. piece of, divine, of designing individualized yeah. instruction, which is just amazing, and that's what we want for our students. But there's also that way to have this be an extension of what the pacing guide is telling us. All right, thank you. Sure. So, um, I think I'm good with that, Vianna, but thank you. Uh, so with Edmentum, so with the secondary, with the 6 through 12, w there will be some online live instruction. Um, I plan on asking the teachers to use our new math series rather than the Edmentum courseware because we just invested a lot of money. <laughs> in, in I'm glad you said that because <laughs> when you said we weren't buying a package program, it is a package program. Right. It um, is. It's providing the. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Okay. It's not our our I mean, math program we just adopted. It's okay. not our social studies program we just adopted. It is that program. I mean, it, it's it's a program, but we're using like Dr. Siebert said, we're using our teachers in conjunction with, and the, and I and we're planning on doing the same thing, like with Edmentum. The the courseware is is here. It's created, but. Once the teachers know who the students are, then they're going to personalize. We don't, we're not asking the teachers, it's not going to be, they're just going to plop it in there and then say, contact me during office hours. They're going to personalize it based on the students that they have and they're going to, there will be expectations and actually uh, Mr. Hodge and Dr. Secret and I started working on our remote learning plan for the state and, um, you know, one thing we had to come up with was what does that look like for our students? Um, and as we thought about this, 
online environment, you know, we said we really need the teachers to be hired for this academy to help us flesh yeah. that out because it, it's going it's going to look different at both levels, first of all, um, and it's going to de- depend somewhat on the learners. You know, at the high school level, again, just like we did in the spring, they're going to have to adjust based on the time of day. And we do want the teachers to be be able to do some live instruction. There are virtual labs in here, but whichever high school teacher may apply to do the science may also want to do some labs with them. They aren't necessarily want, going to want to rely exactly on what Edmentum has for each lab that is available and that sort of thing. So, can I? Sure. Okay. So we know based on research that the two biggest change makers for students learning is having them be empowered, so having them take on that learning themselves and to be motivated to learn, and the teacher. Those are the two pieces that can have the biggest effect size for student learning. So we don't we don't want these pieces driving instruction. We want them to supplement instruction because it's valuable for that. But our drivers are our teachers. They're the ones driving instruction. They're the ones that actually make that connection with the students to help empower them, to help them want to learn, to figure out what they need to do to let that student on fire so that they're excited about the learning that's going on in the classroom. If we stick with this, that's not going to happen. So that's why it's important that, yes, it is a canned curriculum, but we could probably argue that with a lot of things. It's how we're going to use that. So there's a lot of things that if we just followed what the teacher's resource would say, would be canned. But we believe in our teachers, and we believe in supporting them with making sure that they're using best practices, evidence-based instruction, and that they have resources that they can individualize for students and what they need. And this is one of those pieces that we think can really help do that. It's a both-and approach. Right, exactly. And, And we've got this great CTIS team I mean, they're, I can't say enough about them. That is, they're going to help support these teachers that are that apply and are chosen to help. I think the real key here. I mean, we have to have some kind of something if we're going to run a Black Tiger virtual sure. academy. So um, let me. So let me show you. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I apologize. I have a tendency to do that. I stopped doing it with nose. So, I cut these long. Um, so this is an example. This is um, the Edmentum. This is the something that they gave me access to. So as you can see, they, these are like their little symbols. So there are four students in this sample class that are falling behind. So <laughs> running backwards. <laughs> Two that are just a teeny tiny bit behind. Um, no students that are right where they're supposed to be right now. One student that's a little bit ahead of the game. Nobody with something locked that needs unlocked right now. And um, I tried clicking on that. I don't know what, exactly what that symbol means. Um, Taken to the next level. Yeah, it might be that they rushed through something. Um, yeah, I love that. Oh, my log. See? See what happens? So Rachel and Julie, is it possible that there would be teachers who are using both Moby Max and Edmund? Oh yes. So we expect that all of the elementary teachers will be using Moby Max in the classroom because it it will be providing in some way. Yeah, that yeah, in some way. It will be providing that data. But um, but also Edmentum as well. Yeah, and then the the nice thing about the Edmentum is that they can pull from the courseware um, and I'll show you that as well. It, it, they can pull from there to um, to help supplement for their remote learning or when they're not doing live instruction or when they are, especially with the virtual labs and things. That's why I wanted to show you that one in particular. Um, It's pretty fascinating that oh, ready to score. That's what the timer was. That that high school students, when they're taking biology and they have to dissect things, or physics, and they have to do an experiment, that they can have these virtual labs 
and the students, I mean, they, they can't hold things, they, they don't have that, that tactile kind of experience, but they can get that visual experience, and then data is presented to them. So it's pretty fascinating how they can have so much so much of a great experience, even though they're, they're learning through a remote setting. So they don't actually have to pit the frog any longer. They don't. I'll, I'll sign up for that class. <laughs> so, um, I didn't have to hit the frog. again, this is a sample that they create to share the demo. So, my, my friend Carl, my <laughs> fake friend Carl here, is a 10th grader with a fake student ID. It tells you when he last accessed. Um, so, it tells you he's slightly off pace. He has a current grade of a B, but overall his course grade would be an F because it's intended to be a semester long course. Um, it shows you that out of 33 activities for the semester, he's completed 42%. Um, and no time on task right now, but 455 tries. So that, um, obviously, if it were a real student, it would be a little more helpful. All right. um, but you can see the things that he has attempted and things that he hasn't done. So he never took the student ori orientation. He never accessed the syllabus. So that might be why Carl's not so successful. Um, he didn't do the pretest or the discussion. So you can require a pretest as the teacher, or you can make it optional. So, um, and then you can see the things that he did. He, the, the star means that the student has mastered it, and the teacher sets the level for mastery. Do you want it at 70%, 75%, 80%, and so on? Um, these are the points scored, um, and then you can click on these to see actually how they did or you know, to see it. Um, I had one that I wanted to show you in particular. So when a high school teacher is conferencing with with Carl, they can pull this up together and they can walk through and 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 talk to Carl about the kinds of things that he needs to do to help himself be more successful. So that's one of the things that, as a high schooler that's in the Black Tiger Learning Academy, that's something that they would be doing. They would be conferencing with the students individually, and then if the students need additional help, then that's something that they certainly can do remotely, and they can help with additional lessons, pulling other resources if they need to. So this is just one type of activity that um, Carl hasn't completed yet. It's the effects of exercise on muscles and heart rate. Um, and then it goes through, here's the objective. Talks about what you're doing, why you're doing it. It gives all sorts of tasks, hypothesis and data collection, analyzing and extending, testing muscle fatigue, uh, and then planning an investigation. Um, and then, what are you doing? You're measuring your pulse. Here's the materials you need to gather. Make sure you're staying safe. And then it goes through how to do it, and then it actually, he has to actually type something in there. Um, and then collecting data with different trials. And then another trial, and then making, how much do you think your pulse will increase during the two activities? And then another question, perform the two activities you chose for a period of 10 minutes each and record your data, so on and so forth. And then these down here in green are like example answers that would have been given. Then he has to draw a line graph. So you can see these are, you know, not just simple point and click types of things.
There's a scoring scale there for him so that he can see how he's being graded. There's a dictionary. He can have narration turned on or off. He can have sentences read aloud to him. He can have different languages translated, calculator, math tools, highlighting tools. So we're getting all the positives that we saw previously, but just in a more mature... Right, exactly. Yep. And then... Um, The other thing, so for flex assignments, so this is the value of for teachers who want to integrate this into the blended, or it's going to be awesome specifically for the remote learning um, academy. So like here's my sample class that I created. When you create your sample class, um, and I did share the presentation with you on Google because there's a link so you can see all the courses that are available are hyperlinked. Um, anytime you do an assignment, you can share it with just one student. You can share it with all the students in class so that you have that differentiation available. Um, so again, if you have, you know, if you if you've given a pre-assessment, then you'll know whether all the students need the assignment or not. But then when you go to create a new assignment, which is super easy to do. Especially when the computer works quickly. Click on new assignment. This section here looks a lot like bright space or yep. poetry. Or what have you. Here are my instructions. And whatever it can be. Right. You know, take a walk outside, then follow the instructions in the assignment. Then when I scroll down, I choose, do I want it to be all the students or just my friends Mandy and Cole? Scroll down, I choose my class that I want it to be for. why but it's not dragging but there's something I missed but you get the idea you just drag it over there and then you click save um, and then you can put the due date on the assignment you can leave it just in a list and that sort of thing and then it shows up in the list like you saw in the previous section for the students to complete so how long is this information retained does it become like a working portfolio right so it saves it um, you know, in there for the students. This is something that can be assigned through. They're doing a Google integration this summer um, so that students will be able to sign on through Google or teachers can assign it through Google. Um, and so that will have to be up to our, our remote learning academy teachers. It's going to 
kind of have to be dependent. And then um, what what we will have what blah, 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 blah. in terms of like if they're doing a writing piece, I'm sure there are teachers will still have them do that via Google Classroom. Right. Mm -hmm. If they're doing a multiple choice piece as is in here, I'm sure they'll have them just do it in here and then just record the grade. All grades um, from the grade book. Are um, let me go back there. Can be exported, and then they can just be uploaded right into progress. Okay. So, so as students, parents don't have to go to different places for grades, and everything at the end of the year goes right in, you know, to the system. And, you know, when we change it the semester, we don't have any problems with that. That's my thought. As kids are building portfolios, if you will, mm -hmm. um, they can create one and use this process, moving that, whatever. Right. And it's stored where? On Google? From year to year. Oh. I start right. third grade, and sure. I'm going to start to create my working portfolio, if you will that will travel with me through the end of middle school, perhaps into high school. Where do I build my portfolio and where do I retain that information? Our so students that have been doing that in Google. At this that's point. what I'm asking. For the, for the most okay. part. And then the younger kids, you know. The younger kids haven't had anything like that before. Oh, well. So that's a really good question. Sorry, I still think I could teach well, you. Well, they, right. <laughs> they have their data binders. They have their data binders. They have their data binders, but they don't have mm -hmm. something like MobyMax that can house that information from year to year. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. the, our, our intention is for the elementary students to continue on with their, with their data binders. Um, however, we, we feel pretty strongly that that probably needs to be switching over to a more electronic um, Presentation okay. versus the versus the paper, um, where previously we were really only considering fifth grade to doing that. Um, so that's really intriguing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I just ask my fellow board members, is, is there more information you need We're to see tonight to make yeah. a decision yeah. tonight? Because yeah. I don't want to stop if you need yeah. more information to vote. No, no, we I'm, can come back. Yeah. No, I'm, so. I'm good. Thank you.